Hey guys, it's Logan here with Hydra 572. Today I'd like to do a collection update on just my folding knives. I have some interesting new additions from the past year or so that I didn't always let you guys know about, and I'm feeling pretty stable in the collection right now, not anticipating too many new additions here in the foreseeable future. So I feel like it's a good time to go ahead and document what I have, and have some interesting discussions about if I'm still carrying certain blades, or if my views on a knife changed after I reviewed it. So it's going to be a little bit of a drawn out video, I want to say a couple sentences about each knife or group of knives, but you guys will see the whole collection by the time we're done. I think for the first time in a while I actually have every folding knife that I own, so it should be a good time. We'll start at the enormous end of the spectrum and move down toward the small end. So let's get started with the Cold Steel Pocket Swords. All of these are the old OS 8 models, they have since been re-released in the new steels, I think some in BD-1 and some in the XHP. These are incredible blades, start on the left with the Raha, great big recurve, you guys know I love these things, and this thing is just a monster. Too large for many pairs of pants that I own, but absolutely fearsome performance. The Espada, the knife I liked so much, I bought it twice. The G10 version feels light and fast in hand. I think it would be a great fighting knife. And the full dress version is just insane. A mixture of a gentleman's folder and a pocket sword. Just an absolute joy to carry and use. I am looking to get one of these in the new steel. And then the Voyager, the first of the pocket swords that I owned, an absolutely incredible value option. You don't get the wave deployment, but the thumb studs are fast, smooth knife, mechanically fantastic, just an all-around joy. The pocket swords are incredible blades. I would absolutely recommend that people own them. Unfortunately, I haven't been carrying them too much. Just because I've been up at school, I've been carrying something a little bit more reasonably sized. I see these things as being primarily for firearm backup and firearm defense. Seeing as I'm not carrying a firearm up at school, I've been more content to carry something a little bit more reasonably sized. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys the 4-inch folders. So here they are. One of my favorite types of blades to carry and some of my best knives are right here. Let's go ahead and get started with the Cold Steel AK-47. It's actually the first knife that I bought from one of the quality knife manufacturers. I'd had Gerber's and Appalachian Trails and things like that, and then Chad got the Spartan and I got this. This blade took really good care of me. I'm looking to replace it in the new steel, possibly with the green handle coloration sometime here soon. Go ahead and move on down to a new blade, the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. I uh, just did my first impressions on this. So far I'm pretty impressed and I'm looking forward to uh, getting to use this as a review specimen and really test out that XHP steel. I think this is a really functional blade, a uh, great blade profile for cut tests, those sorts of things. Ontario Rat 1, another workhorse of a knife. Uh, I abused this one on video way back, and uh, it has been an absolute workhorse. Even with the bent liner, this thing has just been a great knife. I would like to get another one for myself here sometime soon, just to have a full-strength model, a little less uh, wobble in the lock, but this is an amazing knife. Um, we had a contest going on with Cynric way back in the day. These things were a lot of fun. I could absolutely see owning a couple of these, using them in packs and whatnot. Onto another workhorse knife. Here we have the Hogue EX-01. This is the four inch model, the G10 handle. Uh, really fantastic knives. I'm looking at reviewing this one and the three and a half inch. Take that guy out real fast. I'm going to be reviewing these here soon. First, I want to send my G10 model has developed a little bit of blade play. Um, I think that the metal portions of the handle, those little inset liners, um, I think they were epoxied onto the G10, and I think the epoxy came loose. So I'm going to send that in for a little bit of warranty service. That guy's been getting hard carry and hard usage for two years now, so I could understand a little hiccup like that. I want to send it in, see what their service department says. But when I get that blade back, we are going to have a full style review, highly recommended blades. I feel like they're a little underpublicized, so I'm really excited to get some information out there on these blades. I think EDC blades, tactical blades, these things are just incredible. These are the Hogue EX-01s. Here we have a CRKT that I received as a present. This one is the M16. 14 ZSF. They did a couple of models for different military operations, um, like the M16s, M21s, but this thing is a full-on 4-inch folder, uh, great big knife, those dual Carson flippers, one of them you can use as a wave, 
just a really cool knife. Haven't been carrying it too much. It's been sitting around in the box just because it doesn't perform all that well as a utility cutter, but uh, still one of my favorite knives, a gift from my father, I'm pretty sure, um, and a well-loved member of the collection. Moving on, we have the ZT-0200, still wearing its original lanyard from me. Uh, I had a bad habit of making these permanent, unremovable lanyards. This one still has its. Um, really cool blade, got me started on ZTs. I think they're discontinuing, or maybe they just discontinued um, a certain blade coloration coating, something like that. But uh, unfortunately, the Ken Onion era at Kershaw and ZT seems to be at its end. Um, they are de-emphasizing these blades. They're de-emphasizing the hinderers as well, um, which is a shame to see because I really love these blades. They sort of, ZT still had that really overbuilt philosophy going on. Um, but what can I say? I love the direction ZT is going. Here is my ZT0452 carbon fiber anodizing job by um, a member of the Instagram community. I'll put his information in the video description. Uh, this knife is just incredible. I'm looking at reviewing it here in the near future, um, but it is my high-end carry right now. One of my favorite blades, probably the best job I've ever done buying a knife. Um, really fantastic blade. Love the design. Love the blade profile, carbon fiber, the handle feels amazing. I could just go on and on about this blade. Um, I'm completely in love. One that it is reminiscent of, the Spyderco Velotin. Probably my first high-end carry. Got the G10 um, pulling the fake job as wood there. I think it looks amazing. Um, great custom maker, great production company. Excellent collaboration. Really love this blade. It doesn't get too much carry anymore. It is an awful thick um, blade stock, and they didn't grind the edge particularly well. And on top of that, it has some front-to-back um, lock slip. And I actually just closed the knife on my hand from the locked position. That's not supposed to happen. I'm going to go ahead and clean up, and then uh, we will keep going. Well, I think I was just saying that I don't carry the Velotin very much because I was concerned about the lock slip. So, uh, yeah, I don't have too much more to say about that. I guess it's time to get this one sent in, get some warranty service done. Moving on, we have the Protec TR4. An incredible knife, uh, soon to be reviewed. Um, tactical folder that you can use for some utility type cutting. Uh, just a joy of a knife to use. Have 154 cm and just a wicked blade like a big brother to the Spyderco native. Um, already talked about our ZT0452CF, uh, beautiful blade, and another beautiful blade, the CRKT Nurk Tie. Another fantastic custom maker and another fantastic collaboration. Um, basically everything I like about this design available for CRKT for one-fifth of the price. Just a beautiful knife. So now I'll go ahead, get ready, and show you some three and a half inch and three inch bladed folders. All right, there we go. In this size range, we are looking at blades that are more focused on a utility cutter type usage, but you guys know me, I still like to be able to lean on these blades. If you had to defend yourself, I think that they should be absolutely worthy, well-designed, and strong. Um, the SOG Twitch XL, a fantastic utility cutter, and it meets that bill. I am sure it is strong enough you could defend yourself if need be. Um, assisted opening flipper with a back lock, which is uh, quite an interesting design. See that uh, folded over steel they have there on the back lock. Overall, just a really cool blade. I got this one as a present as well. Moving on down, we have the Spyderco Native. Um, I would call this one the Native 4, I guess. They're not calling it that, but the one after it's the Native 5, so Native 4. Um, just a boss of a utility cutter, a wicked looking blade profile. Uh, one of my favorite Spyderco knives. I have S30V, one of my best experiences with S30V. I used this thing as a utility cutter for a long time, and I still do on occasion. Moving on, we have the CRKT Endorser. I actually picked this one up. I uh, got it as a present for Christmas, so uh, this one is in the review queue as well. I'm using it for utility cutter type tasks. Got a relatively thin blade so far. It's been performing very well. I just worry that with the outburst safe firing mechanism and uh, with the handle material not completely covering the liners, I do think they have some things that could be improved on this design. Moving on, we have a Kershaw Leak. Right now, mine is not assisted. This is the Black Wash. Um, 
Love this blade, use it as a utility cutter. Uh, it's often the third knife that I'm carrying. Just haven't been carrying it too much because I need to email Kershaw, get them to send me out another torsion bar. Mine was worn out and not opening the knife anymore. Very cool knife though. Uh, probably send that email off around the same time I'm doing the one for the Vlatten. Kershaw Echelon, discontinued now I believe. Fantastic knife, love the Undyed G10, and this thing has lots of performance and good design to back it up. Just an all-around cool little blade. Wish they still made them. Uh, I did de-assist mine. I like it better de-assisted. I like the action on it. Uh, thumb studs work fine. Um, a Kershaw that they are still making. Here we have a Kershaw Emerson. I want to say this is the 5. I'm pretty sure this is the 5. The CQC K5. Um, love this blade. Want to pick up another 6 soon. Maybe a 4XL soon. Love that you can get a uh, utility Bowie style Emerson. Um, made by Kershaw for like 30-40 bucks. Just a fantastic value. Uh, cool little blades. Um, I like these and the ZT collaborations more than I like actual Emersons that I've handled in stores. Spyderco Centafonte 3, another one of my fantastic, well-reviewed utility cutters. This one, uh, perhaps not as strong as the others. I believe we do have liners. Um, they're awful thin, though. The blade is riveted, and it's always had a little bit of side-to-side -side wobble. Um, but for that, you get a thin blade profile and uh, an absolutely awesome utility cutter. And I would still use it to defend myself. If I had to, I would uh, just be a little bit more worried that you were going to have an equipment failure. Um, it's something that you put up with if you decrease the weight of the knife. I mean, this knife basically disappears when you put it in your pocket. It is completely agile in hand. That thin blade, you have fantastic slicing. Um, little bit of a compromise on strength, I would say. Move over into some of our autos. Got the Protec TR3 and that awesome blue jazz handle finish. I would like to take some high quality photographs of that. I think it's just beautiful. Um, the autos I haven't been carrying very much just as a legal concern. Um, awesome blades. I love the cool factor of being able to flip them out. But when this is on the table against something that's legal to carry and I can get out of my pocket fast, like... Uh, say the AK-47, waving this out of the pocket, it's going to draw much less attention from police, and you're still going to be able to have your knife out fast. So unfortunately, the fantastic Protec has mostly been getting carried on short trips and around my house. Um, similar blade for much less money, the Boker AK-74, fantastic little side opening auto, um, not very much money. If you are interested in side opening autos, you should just pick one of these up. They cost 30, 35 bucks, great utility cutters, could use them to defend yourself. I actually think that handle is perfection. Love the stipling, the texture on the aluminum, uh, the finish is very good. Just all around cool blades, pretty well squared away. A couple of concerns I brought up in the review, nothing too major. Moving on, something you guys might not have seen in a while. The AKC Leverletto, a very cool knife. I love Italian stilettos. Unfortunately, this mechanism is just not that robust. Um, not a painstakingly expensively produced blade. Decent quality, but uh, just after years and years of carry. Um, the lock doesn't necessarily engage every time I deploy. I've actually had small pieces of metal break off the plunger that goes in to lock the blade. Um, sometimes they can be very difficult to deploy. Right now it deploys pretty easy, just doesn't lock up so well. You can sort of push the lock in with your thumb. Um, not things that you'd be wanting to deal with on a knife like this. So, very cool piece, but I mostly just keep it around to look at. Unfortunately, similarly subjugated, uh, the Cold Steel Tie Light. Very cool blade, some things that they could have done a lot better. I think flipping the quillions around so that you didn't have to run your thumb or the web of your palm into that sharp edge would have been a lot better. Uh, would have worked just fine for waving the knife open. And then uh, the lock geometry on this one as well. I don't think this one will close on me, but uh, front to back blade play abounds. So I'm looking at uh, maybe putting this as an, in a car as a defensive blade, something like that. Um, very cool blades, just not seeing too much use right now, unfortunately. This one is on loan from Chad, actually. Here we have the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight with that translucent blue. This one is in um, BD1. So I haven't really gotten to play too much with the steel. I've used it a little, sharpened it once or twice. I don't really feel like I have a handle on it, how it compares to other uh, Spyderco budget steels quite yet. And then here we have a Buck... 
uh, 112 that my mother got at work and passed along to me. A very cool blade. I love the old classic bucks. Um, I think there are things they could do to modernize them, but this one being uh, passed down through the family, I think is just awesome. So yeah, the uh, 3.5 inch folders, fantastic knives. Um, a lot of them, unfortunately, these ones here are not seeing too much use, but all of the other ones you saw are getting normal rotation as the utility cutter focused um, knife that I'm carrying. I usually carry these days like one big boy like that, um, defensive folder if I need it, and then something a little smaller that I can use for utility cutting right there. That would be a great EDC pairing for me nowadays. So I have some more blades I want to show you guys, some stuff that I had early on in my knife collecting career, and some stuff that I've gotten as gifts, so I'll roll those in next. Okay, here they are. Most of these blades are pretty meaningful to me, so I'll go ahead and get started here. This is a Gerber Profile Folder. It is one of the first knives that I consistently EDC'd, and you can see that it is pretty similar in size and design to the 4-inch folders that I would come to love. So in a lot of ways, I feel like this really showed me where I was going with knife collecting, where I was going with knife using. Pretty cool blade. I mean, it's a Gerber. There are some terrible things about it. Um, this is pot metal mixed with iron and cow shit and uh, fermented in somebody's stove at 300 degrees for a week and a half. And the lockup is at 100%. Rubberized handle. But, I don't know. Somehow I still love this thing. Um, and I did carry it for a long time. It uh, took care of my cutting tasks. What I needed back uh, before I had all the other stuff that would make me look down my nose at a folder like that. Um, similar Gerber paraframe. I've had a series of these blades and God, these knives are awful, but I just love them for some reason. I would actually like to see this design made by somebody who would competently make the knife. Uh, frame lock and they do have problems with the lock not engaging all the way. Um, bending the lock bars over all that sorts of thing. Um, but yeah, I've had a couple of these, the full sized ones included. And, uh, what can I say? They're cute little blades for no money believe this one is a Gerber as well. This is the second knife that I owned. I believe these were called Silver Knights. Mother of Pearl there on the handle. I love the Mother of Pearl. Um, one day I would like to own a couple of nice knives like that Elmar Eagle that's got the uh, Mother of Pearl. I gotta have me one of those. Very cool blade. I broke the tip off and had to resharpen it myself. Um, but this was my second knife. Let me see if I can find... There's my first knife. This is another little Gerber. These have had a couple of names over the years, but they've always made these little plastic handle, uh, very small cutters. I got one of these on a road trip with my parents and my brother. Uh, we whittled in the car and drove our parents insane for the whole road trip, and eventually they took us back to another store. I think we got these at like a Bass Pro, and uh, we got to pick out nicer ones, and this was the one that I picked out. And uh, yeah, couldn't really be happier with it. This one stays locked off in a little case, um, probably from right around this time. You could tell that I was going to be a knife collector. So let's keep moving. Uh, this is a little knockoff Swiss Army tool-like thing. Um, I actually got this. There was a cutlery shop in my mall um, for a little while, and it's not there anymore. It was called the Upper Edge, but I still remember it, and they gave these out for free. So I still have one of these. remember uh, going to the mall as an 8-year-old and drooling over knives. We have a SOG Micron, I'm pretty sure. I actually got this as a present from Brother Sinric. Um, I sent him the Nurk tie because he wanted to check it out. He was thinking of getting one. I offered it up and uh, he sharpened it for me, gave me that awesome skull lanyard. Very cool. Put the edges in on it and he sent this with it as well. Um, so this has stayed in my knife boxes for a while. Really cool little blade, just haven't wanted to carry it too much seeing as it is a present and it's got that cool story. Um, moving on, we have a couple of slip joints here, some K-Bar, this one in the middle I'm not sure on. Uh, these came down through my dad, and uh, very cool knives, it's very cool to have a little bit of the knife collecting history in the family that way. I've got some fixed blades that came down from my grandpa, so uh, very cool to see pieces like this. Um, my dad used to work at a hardware store, and uh, he collected knives and perused the knife display there as well, back way before knife collecting looked very much like it does now. Um, another one here, just really cool little blades. Obviously I'm not using them too much, trying to keep them in good condition, um, all those sorts of things. There's another one there. Um, moving on, another Swiss Army tool-like, um, 
marked Barlow Solingen. I think I did a video on this one um, a while ago. Relatively high quality piece came down through either my mom or my dad. Um, they got it from work as well. The ballast song that uh, Chad made for me on his dad's mill. The blade from the Jaguar. Very cool blade. Uh, Chad's off in the Marines now. I don't get to see him too much. Um, just a fantastic little project that he had. It worked very well. Um, I mean, it's cool. He basically made the handles from scratch. And uh, it's a friend that I have that I don't get to see too much anymore. So, yeah, you know, I appreciate it. Have another. This one is a Gerber. Just a big old lockback. This one came um, from work as well. I think as bonuses and promotions and things like that, Dow sometimes gave knives. So, you know, that's cool. Uh, another. I think this one's a buck. I'm not sure. Could just be a knockoff. Another. Uh, down from the parents type blade. Very cool. I'm glad to have so many of them. Um, just on the off chance that I have multiple kids or you know nephews, things of that nature. Um, here we have a CRKT Mount Shasta. This one came down as a present as well. Uh, very cool blade. I just haven't been carrying it as much. Um, it doesn't really beat things out for utility cutter pocket space uh, since I have options like the Kershaw Leak. I actually left this one out earlier. Cold Steel Mini Tough Light. Uh, fantastic small light EDC cutters. I could throw in there as well, if I could find it. Uh, too many knives. I have a sea of knives. Um, Spyderco models as well. Could do fantastic in competition against this blade. So I haven't been carrying it too much, but it is still cool to have those blades um, that I can tell my kids came from their grandparents. Here we have one of the only Victorinox products I own, uh, just an old Swiss Army knife. This one lives in my bug out bag now. Took good care of me as a kid, handled all of my uh, ridiculous abusive tasks that I needed of it. I have it sharpened and polished up now and it lives in the bug out bag. So, unless I am mistaken, I'm rapidly running out of folding knives to show you guys. This here is a Mantis. I forget what they called this one. Uh, lock up problems with this as well. I think the blade tang is actually cracked. I cut that groove um, to use to be able to tighten the pivot because the pivot was very loose and I own no piece of hardware that gets on that. So I just cut that with a Dremel cutting wheel. Uh, cool blade, but with the lock up and also the clip, um, this holes for the clip screws are stripped as well. So this one is in pretty bad shape. It doesn't get carried too much. So that is basically it. That is the folding knife collection. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Started a long time ago. Like I said, that road trip, um, picking up that little Gerber, you know, I've basically gone from this to this. I traveled through this along the way. Um, so it has been a really interesting journey. It's been a lot of fun. YouTube has been a huge part of it. I'm excited to keep knife collecting, and I'm really excited to see where we go from here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more of the same.